I'm Draco Self-Important, and I think you should listen to me. I also think you should like and subscribe. So, um, what the fuck is Jester Maxing? And also, uh, Escort Maxing. That one seemed a little more self-explanatory to me. Uh, the Jester Maxing, in fact, has two different definitions, which is super fun, makes conversation extra easy. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> but one of them was a suggestion for a video topic. The other I came upon while researching the former, and I, I yeah, the pattern here. There, there was, we're going to define, and then we're going to talk about all of this, right? So, gesture maxing. Two different definitions. One seems to be preferred in on the uh, wheat waffles side of uh, the community. Um, basically being playing, playing the game of investing in women in order to try to get with them. Um, he talked about friend zoning, right? Uh, talked about dudes who, you know, you spend like 45 minutes talking to someone and then later you go home and you're like, when's it gonna, when am I gonna get my chance with her? When's she gonna realize how wonderful I am? You know, um, you, you know, basically putting any amount of time into a woman and not having an immediate return of pussy, basically, and thinking that if you continue to sink time into these interactions, that eventually she's going to come around, right? Now, why is this not, in fact, going to work? And why is this different than what I'm suggesting that you do? So, as, as I've previously stated, the friend zone is bullshit, right? You either want to be friends with someone or you don't. If you don't want to be friends with them, then you shouldn't be pursuing a long-term relationship with them. Full stop. If this is someone that you do not enjoy spending prolonged periods of time with, with your clothes on, talking about whatever, watching TV, like, if you don't like spending time with this person enough to want to be her friend, then pursuing a relationship is stupid, and you shouldn't do that, right? So if you are only friends with a woman because your hope is that eventually she might bang you, that's a stupid reason to be friends with someone. You should be friends with someone because friendships enrich your life. It's good to have relationships with other people. It fulfills biological need because your brain craves these things, right? It's why people who don't interact with others for long periods of time become a little nutty. Guys, I mean, we all lived through the pandemic, right? But but some of us are having a little bit of a harder time leaving the house. Uh, you know, I am among them, right? Like, I still, like, it's, you know, I'm not, like, super stoked to go, but also I'm not hating an entire gender of people on the internet. Um, <clears throat> and I say hating, I understand that, you know, not every incel uh, hates women, but even those of you that seem to like them speak about them in a way that is just really unpleasant and I think affects the way that you do think about them, or maybe vice versa. It, it, either, it either belays the thing that you really do think that you're trying to cover up, or you think that, that your thought process is totally chill, but like you do have some unconscious biases that you're not acknowledging. And if you acknowledge them, you would be able to more easily, like, deal with them. Um, but let's, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll circle back here. Um, the next form of gesture maxing, which is the definition that, that makes more sense to me based on the word, 
is um, the idea that if you are, you know, funny enough in literally by any means necessary, right, um, that that will, you know, you'll be able to pick up women because women really love a sense of humor, right? Um, so I also have said, like, sense of humor is important. Being funny is, you know, a plus. So what's the difference between gesture maxing and what I'm suggesting? Because there is one. Gesture maxing, um, as, as far as I can tell in this context, involves doing goofy shit as one of the primary forms of uh, comedy. Um, you know, slapstick shit, goofy hats, dancing all crazy at the club. Um, gentlemen, women don't watch Jackass. Women don't enjoy the Three Stooges. You might get a laugh out of her from this if she's drunk in a club or something and or also because all of the dudes with you are genuinely laughing at you because they probably think it's funny. Um, you, this is not like, women don't want to be with the buffoon. You don't want to be with the guy who you have to explain to all your friends why the hell you're with that asshole. Uh, I know this because uh, my dumb ass, yeah, um, don't give up your friendships for relationships. It never works out well. It's it, If your friends that you like genuinely care about and you think have good heads on their shoulders don't like someone that you're dating and can give you reasons why, listen to them. Uh, so anyway, my second husband, um, real jackass. Like, dude makes a good first impression, but then after that just becomes completely socially inept for several months until he, like, adapts to your presence or something. I don't fucking know. Um, but he was, like, total ass, like, screaming when I was on the phone with, and, with my friend and, like, making jokes that I was straight up like, those are not appropriate jokes for you to be making to someone that you don't fucking know that I, you know. Um, and I, you know, my friend was like, I cannot fucking take this dude. Like, you know, because this was someone who I spent most of my time with prior to meeting him. Like, we were together all the fucking time. Um, you know, like, there was one point that we dated dudes that were best friends. It, it was, um, in fact, she was still seeing the dude in that best friend group. Uh, I had, uh, I broke up with the other dude because this was, I was 22 and he was 18. This was not a great age difference, let me tell you. It was... It, yeah, four years doesn't seem like a lot until that four years is one of you just graduated high school and one of you has an associate degree. We had the same job. That's how we met. We met in training at work. Um, so, you know, but like the biggest mama's boy I've ever met in my entire life and also loved video games more than sex. And that's not what I'm about. So I bounced. Um, but anyway my friend was like, I cannot take this fucking dude. And I picked the dude and, uh, yeah, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I should have listened. It was a fucking mistake. But, um, if you are the buffoon and that is what, what yeah, that's, mm. because more often than not, the buffoon equals the mistake. Uh, because the people who do this shit naturally, generally don't know how to be it, Sorry, this is just me having real bias against uh, the, the second husband. He's kind of, wow, one of the most awful people in the entire fucking universe. Sweet Jesus, you have no idea. Um, anyway. <sighs> yeah. So, the other thing that we get into with the gesture maxing is jokes, right? Um... Well, let me let me back let me back up just just for a moment. What's the difference between the well no, the other part, the the self-deprecating humor, right? I am a big fan of self-deprecating humor, honestly. You may have noticed, but you have to employ it correctly, right? Self-deprecating humor when your entire vibe is I fucking hate myself is nothing but you burdening the people around you to tell you how much you don't suck. Right? Um, like, if 
you know, you are like, oh, uh, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly at all of your friends, and they know that this is something that you genuinely feel bad about, they're gonna be like, oh, no, man, no, you're fine, no, uh, which you don't want to fucking hear that because you don't fucking believe them anyway, right? Whether or not you are actually ugly, because most of you motherfuckers out here talking about how ugly you are, are not. What you are is delusional. This is basically just, like, this is the same shit I was doing in the fucking eating disorder forums in the fucking 2000s, man. <clears throat> Y'all are out on incel Reddit and shit and uh, other fucking incel sites just gassing each other up about how fucking horrible you are, how horrible women are, how lonely you're gonna be, how ba 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 right? Meanwhile, I was off talking about how I was never gonna be skinny enough, I was gonna be fat for the rest of my life, um, how I was totally worthless because of how fat I was. Meanwhile, my ass was so not fucking fat. Like, I was barely even, like, Oh my god, was I not fat, right? Not even kind of, not even sort of, like, I, there was a point prior to my engagement in all of this shit that I was, right? I got big because when I was a teenager, I went on the fucking depot and gained like 80 pounds in a year when I was 16. So I, but... I fucking was, you know, in my 20s, uh, early, t yeah, yeah, in my fucking early 20s, and so, like, it was easy for me to lose the weight, I just had to put a little effort in, and then I continued down this path of trying to make myself think that I was some sort of giant hog when I was, like, a size 7 in women's, and that was, like, a size 7 now is bigger than a size 7 was in the 2000s, I assure you. It's, I know this because, <clears throat> um, a few years ago, pre-COVID, I had gotten down to what currently is, passes for a size 7, uh, and I, like, found some old pants, because I was like, ooh, yeah, this will be great, I can wear these old, and I went, um, like, Bro, did those things not come halfway up my phone? I'm like, no. So in the past 15 or so years, the fatness of Americans has made those sizes inflate. Um, so I definitely, definitely, like, yeah. Um, you know, so like, I see pictures of, of y'all, and, you know, I've said before, the, those of you who tend to go off and be the most insanely violent, very rarely actually ugly. Like, average at worst often legitimately attractive dudes and you don't realize it's the shit coming out of your mouth and the way that you're presenting yourself that's the problem it's not your bones um so the thing about a sense of humor however you say you want a sense of humor right everybody says they want someone with a good sense of humor what you mean is you want someone with a similar sense of humor Everyone has a fucking sense of humor, right? With very few exceptions, everyone thinks some shit is funny, and that varies from person to person, and when you find people who find the same things funny, it's fun to have conversations with them, it's fun to enjoy things with them, right? Because you can banter, you can, you know, uh, mystery science theater your way through some, some television and some movies and shit, right? That's not fun to do if you are lefty McLeftist and you are trying to watch the movie with uh, someone who's very Trumpy and you're telling very much different jokes, right? That wouldn't be a pleasant experience. So <clears throat> the gesture maxing of it all, if you are doing the buffoonery version of this, women don't like it. It's not the kind of sense of humor that they have. You know, like, it, how many people do you know or have ever heard of that like to sit down with their wife and watch the Jackass movie? 
I cannot think of a single woman in my life who finds any of that shit even mildly funny, right? Like, there's some sort of human reaction about, like, when you see someone fall or some shit, like, as soon as you realize they're okay, you laugh. It's, it's like a reaction. So you, you know, like, you'll get laughs, but will they actually find it to be, like, genuinely funny? You know, like, no. But if you talk about things that you like and you make jokes about things that they're also interested in, right? If you approach with confidence and actually like some portion of yourself and acknowledge a flaw that you have, then that self-deprecating joke totally lands. Trust me, I know, it's my fucking bread and butter. Like, my whole sense of humor is me pointing out all the shit that's wrong with me so you can't, right? Um, <clears throat> the, the, I've talked about them before. The dude that I dated that used to do MMA. Um, we met because we were in uh, the Satanic Temple together. <laughs> Um, we were a quasi-leadership in the guilds, whatever. Um, meetings were held at his house. And um, I remember, you know, one time, I don't remember how it came up in conversation, but I made a point of, like, saying it so that they would, that, that, that he would hear, so that, um, because I had already, um, like, expressed some interest, you know? Um, but, like, we're talking about someone who was significantly more attractive than me. Like, just... And also, who thought they were fucking ugly! Oh my god, I cannot tell you the amount of times that this fucking dude would be like, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm ugly, and I'm like, okay, first of all, you're not fat, you're just not in MMA shape anymore because you computer program. <clears throat> Dude was still incredibly fit. Did fucking metallurgy as a hobby with a forge out in the back. Constantly building things. Got like, not a fat guy. Very cute guy. Good beard. Um... <coughs> Excuse me, I am, I'm gonna pause this for a second. Appreciate your patience. So anyway, he had good beard, bald, but good bald, you know, like the beard bald combo. He was a metal metalhead, so always like the vest with the patches and the boots and like, it was a look that worked very well. Like, um, I cannot remember, I feel like their eyes were kind of a color changey blue green situation, but like pretty light eyes, like just generally very attractive but oh my god now to be fair uh his fucking wife did tell him he was fat and ugly all the time so that probably had something to do with it but she's awful yeah uh they that was one of those situations where they were poly because uh she wanted to go out and do whatever and then when he pulled the somebody actually wants to bang me card uh, she kind of freaked the fuck out about it. I remember, like, we were, because she was not in the temple, but she would come to, like, family events and shit sometimes, um, because she kind of thought the whole thing was ridiculous, and to be fair, she was probably right. Uh, <laughs> but I remember, um, you know, we had been fine, and then, uh, I started seeing her husband, and then I would, like, show up, um, slightly early, and then she would just, like, literally look at me, turn around, and leave the other way and walk around the house just to not walk past me to go out the front door. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, the reason that I, I am bringing... Um, we're in this meeting, and I tell this joke about how my tits look like uh, fried eggs on a nail because... It's a thing that is, you know, not, not true. 
Um, it's, it's a pretty uh, exaggerated version of what we've got, but I wanted to make very clear before I got in a situation with this dude who I thought was way fucking hotter than me that my body is probably not going to compare. Um, little did I know that they had been in uh, a horribly emotionally and verbally abusive marriage and had been uh, had their self-esteem beaten to a bloody fucking pulp. Um, one of your passport marriages, by the way, gentlemen, this is a Filipino lady that they met while traveling. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the passport marriages do not always result in the happy, traditional, she just does whatever the fuck you want of it all, because people are different all over the world. Individual people are different. Some women suck, some women don't. But thinking that you can approach any large group of people and get the same results out of them is insanity. And that is like literally every goddamn topic that I cover on this channel from fucking Islam, Christianity, incel shit, trans shit, detransitioners, trans backers, anything, anything that I talk about is just me going, you know, if you would treat people as individuals, we wouldn't be worrying about all of this shit. But like, you know, a lot of y'all are going to have to admit that women are people before you can start treating them like individual people. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, no, the, the, like, the first time that I slept with this dude, like, you know, it was a sweaty time, because it was fucking, I think, like, July or some shit, you know, and I... I have said before, if you're doing it right, you're sweaty. Um, and I was like, uh, he was like, oh, I'm all sweaty. And I'm like, oh, I, I don't care. Uh, it's, you know, at least partially my fault. Um, and he's like, really? Like, because I'm, you know, I'm sure that it was an absolute shit show for him to sweat on the little princess when, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So, um, you know, I think that the reason that that particular ex was taken advantage of in this way is because they had no fucking self-esteem and thought up until the point that he meets this vulture of a woman that he was an incel. He had been briefly married before, <clears throat> but that was the only person that he had been with prior to. It was a short situation, if I recall. I don't remember a lot of details about um, his first marriage. I think that he still talked to, th to her. I don't know. But there was a long period of single in between, and, you know, he's just... Like, incel energy like a motherfucker, I just happen to not care, because the reason that we were got together is because I approached him. I asked him out. I, you know, because he never in his life would have, despite the fact that that was, like, you know, an acceptable... You know, You know, would be an oofy doofy situation if not for the fact that, like, he was hot. <laughs> you know, like, uh, but yeah. You have to make sure that you are selecting partners based on who they are and your ability and desire to spend long periods of time with them if you are trying to get a long-term partner, right? Now, if all you're trying to do is get laid, well then, perhaps escort Maxit. Now, 
even if this is not all that you are trying to do, but is in fact something that you desire to do in the interim while you are off making friendships and developing meaningful relationships, etc., etc. Um, here at the Draco Self-Important channel, we do believe that sex work is real work. I do advise you to be cautious if you have the ability to acquire legal licensed uh, sex work, please do. Um, but I do understand that that is not always an option, depending on where you're at. <clears throat> I cannot give you advice on how to vet these things, for I do not know. Um, if this is something that anyone is actually interested in, I can try to find out, but so far no one's been super stoked on it. Um, but one point about the escort maxing that has come up today um, that makes me... it ties in with this jester maxing concept for me. Um, I was watching a dude who was talking about his multiple experiences with escorts. Um, first one was good, second one ghosted him, third one was good, right? So even among paid sex workers, you're not going to get a, a you know, a, a universal experience here. Um, but the two experiences were like, you know, they, it was the girlfriend experience shit, right? It was like the, the trying to, the, um, make him feel good, right? Like hugging, kissing, like she told the one, because the, he got a blowjob and a handjob from the first one, and then the second one actually, uh, lost his virginity, as it were, um, and told her this, like, while he was in the middle of, you know, doing the thing. Um, oh, I think he also said he had another experience where he had to, like, Oh, he tried to go to a massage parlor that did happy endings, and she asked uh, if he liked it aggressive, and he said yes, and she got too aggressive, and he was uh, too, uh, I don't know, shy or whatever to fucking correct. Um, so, the, the, uh, that brings up a couple of things. Um, one, the too shy or whatever emotion was happening there to correct on her doing it badly, that's a lack of communication skills. If you are sleeping with someone, doing something sexual with someone, and they are doing something that does not feel good to you, be kind about it. Don't be an asshole, but it is more than acceptable to be like, not that hard. You know, uh, if... If I told someone I liked it rough and they took it way fucking rougher than I expected, I'd be like, whoa, not that rough. Not what I meant. Sorry. Um, and then you adjust and you move on. But, like, you have to have that open communication. And if you give that communication to someone, they're going to feel more open giving it back to you. Right? So if you are with a girl and you're like, ow, that's too much, she will be comfortable to say that to you as well which means you are more likely to get her off, which means she is more likely to want to do it again. Um, as far as the, like, girlfriend experience and that shit, with the, it's, it's a little, like, because this dude was talking about how he didn't care about dating and didn't care about socializing and didn't want to go... Like, this was a guy who said he didn't want to have friends, basically. He was like, all social interactions are just a gigantic waste of time. Um, but that he just wanted to, uh, and I quote, get his dick wet. Um, and so, escorts ahoy. Um, but the one that, like, where he, you know, lost his virginity... Ugh, I still hate that. Um, and she, like, hugged him and, like, gave him kisses and, you know, was very kind about it, made me think, like, you know, if this is something that you might be interested in, you could use it as an opportunity to, like, practice doing it well um, I don't know for sure because I have not asked any sex workers, 
but I feel like if you had a conversation as a client that was like, listen, um, I would like to have fun here, but also I would like to learn how to be good at this so that when I'm not paying someone that I might do a good enough job that they might want to do it for free again. Could you help? Um, you know, and I, I, you know, some feedback. You don't need the, you know, don't expect her to be your fucking instructor. But, you know, say, like, give me feedback. If I'm doing something going somewhere that's not working for you, like, tell me. Um, you know, I, I encourage as well, if you are in a situation where you are paying for this opportunity to, to really, like, try to get something out of it to take with you other than just getting off. Like, try to learn something um it just seems to me like it, especially you know knowing that if you if you want repeat customers as a sex worker you're going to try to cater to what your clients want and if you know they want to learn to uh please women as it were like that seems like an easy day at the office and you might actually uh you know get some really good tips out of the deal because uh, she'll be delighted that you give a shit about women in general let alone you know would i don't know give her the opportunity to send off one of the good ones out into the world you know no, not ever like <clears throat> This is not going to be an everyone thing. This is just like anything else that you were doing when it comes to sex, consent, 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 right? Um, but like, I don't know, man, there have, there have got to be situations where like I could, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to... Uh, now, the other thing is, um, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news for, for those of you who, who might think... Um, a lot of, of sex workers, like, just cannot get off at work because it's work, you know? Um, so, like, it, it, that may be something to uh, be aware of, um, that, you know, no matter what you do, you may not get the end. She'll probably fake it pretty well. <laughs> you know, like... It, 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 um, although, to be fair, I would bet that most dudes don't give a shit whether or not she's getting off. Um, but if your goal ultimately is to have a relationship with a woman, that really should be your goal. Because the more fun you make that experience for her, the more likely she is to want to do it again. And again and again and again and again. Like, sex is fun, everybody likes it, but it has to be you know, engaging and mutual in order to be fun, right? Um, but this dude, like, was talking about Foyd's and fucking, you know, just the way that he spoke about women just being complete waste of time and hateful and just, oh my god. And then the way that he spoke about the people he paid to sleep with him suddenly these women um although uh, to be fair again way too much emphasis on race y'all are so fucking concerned with bone structure and it's all just eurocentric bullshit do you know where the defined jaw and the protruding chin come from the fucking brits it's colonialism. It's, you just all want to look like fucking British people. That's it, man. That's it. And it's like, I, like... And here's the thing. You think that these things are sexually dimorphic features, right? However, um, this, this jaw here... The, my father does not have any of this. I've discussed this. No fucking jaw, no fucking chin, nothing. The, just, the, just, just no bottom half of the face to fucking speak of. This shit comes from my mother. My mostly British fucking mother. 
like, yeah, what you want is not sexual dimorphism. What you want is white looking. Yeah, because the dude, the the lady who gave this dude this wonderful experience, he was apparently a darker skinned Brazilian woman, and he was like, I don't normally like to look at the dark skin. I'm like, you know, says this dude with an accent that almost certainly means he's brown. Like, I'm like, wow, like, what the fucking, you know, I could be wrong, but um, I don't think so. If, if I were uh, a betting man, and I am not, I'd say either Indian or Pakistani British, um, just judging by the shitty attitude and the accent. And that's not to say that, um, you know, I've just seen a lot of self-identified curry cells, and I think I can spot them at this point. Like, that's, that's where we're at. Um, this, because, you know, I, I do not think by any stretch that every, you know, I talked before, one of my favorite true crime guys is a Pakistani from UK. I think he's in the US now, but still, um, you know, so it's like, I'm, yeah, dude, why are we so concerned about race? Right? Why are we so self-hating about race? Why isn't yours good enough? Why is like, why, why, why is race so much a part of this? All of these beauty standards that y'all want to hold yourselves and each other to are all just, can we look like the colonizers? And I don't get it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I look like the colonizers. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that is the other thing, is genuinely, the way that you guys talk about yourselves, I have no idea, like, yeah, you guys constantly tell me all kinds of insulting things, but then every once in a while I'll get some comment that is, like, really complimentary in a weird way that I don't quite understand, and so I don't know what y'all actually think of my physical appearance. Um, because if you really do think that I'm some sort of hideous monster, then the advice that I'm giving should be more reasonable, right? Like, because I'm not a Chad, so like, if the advice that I'm giving is what... Yeah. Um, so, Jester Maxing. Both versions. Don't do that. Don't think that investing time with someone is you playing into some sort of game. If you do not want to be her friend, don't fucking fake it. Move on with both of your lives. Uh, don't be a fucking clown. This is not a circus. Unless it is, and then you better be getting paid. No one wants to, to date the buffoon. Dude, the, your, your guy friends might think you're funny. You might end up with more dude friends doing that shit, but you are certainly not going to end up with more women. What they're looking for with a sense of humor is a similar sense of humor. So, like, you know, be interesting. Say funny things about things that you like. If you aren't interesting, get a fucking hobby. Then you'll have interest. Get a hobby that involves other people, so you can go spend time with people who share your interests. This is all the same shit, because y'all want to dance around the thing that is required, which is work. Which is the same thing that's required if you get into a relationship. Relationships require work. Do you actually want a relationship? Or do you just want to bitch about how you can't get one? Because if you do not want a relationship, then I do not see the point of spending your entire existence talking about how shitty you are and how you couldn't get one. It, I, I think, you know, there's... 
People are incels for many different reasons, and I'm trying to dissect all of them, and it seems that the attitudes come from the reasons why. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons that I think some of you do this is because you genuinely do not want to put in the work of having a relationship, and you don't want to own that. You don't want to be like, I just really, like, this is not a thing that I want to do, regardless of why, right? You don't want to fucking do it. You know that it's a bunch of fucking work. You know it's a bunch of fucking hassle. It may or may not give you the return on investment, right? But investment being time in this case, because I think that you do invest time in friendships and relationships. And if you invest, you know, romantic or otherwise, if you invest a bunch of time in someone and then it turns out that they're a piece of shit, that doesn't feel good. But, like... Do you want to have friends? Do you want to have a relationship? Do you just want to get laid? You know? Um, as far as the escort maxing, do it up if that's what you, you know, if that will work for you. Please be safe about it. And try to fucking take the opportunity to learn something. You're paying. Get something out of it other than momentary pleasure. You know? I, I don't think it's unreasonable to, uh, you know, I... It, negotiate services that will be of value to you and you know i don't know man like eating pussy's fun you know <laughs> so maybe uh if if you know i don't know i uh i recommend dental dams and also uh legal sex work dental dams as someone who has used them there it's not it's not as exciting it really isn't it's you know blowjobs with condoms also not as exciting condoms it is what it is um but you know it's better than um having your dick run off or you know the herpes face so like do what you gotta do gentlemen um yeah man i don't know don't be fucking jesters. Recognize that relationships are work. Do you want to do the work or not? If not, fucking don't, but stop making it seem like it's because you couldn't. Right? Stop making this about you being incapable so that you don't have to take responsibility for not wanting to do the work. And if you do want to do the work, then recognize that you can and stop holding yourself back based on some shit that you think that other people think that my god the shit that i have yet to hear one of these like oh my god i could just tell that she was repulsed by me stories that like seemed plausible um not to say that it doesn't happen but i don't think that it happens to the degree like I think that, that we get back to that rejection sensitivity dysphoria shit, man. Like, we're talking about a lot of uh, neuroatypical people who don't have the ability to process rejection in the way that neurotypical people do, and you take it a lot fucking harder. And, you know, one, like, kind of weird look you then assume means, oh my god, she hates me, she thinks I'm repulsive, she wants to set me on fire, da da da. And really, it could have just been that you were slightly too loud and that bothered her, you know? Or like maybe you bumped her chair or any number of other things that might cause someone to give you an annoyed look that you then interpret as visceral disgust. Is that actually what's happening? Or are you just perceiving the worst case scenario? Um, yeah. I think... We're going to talk about some mental health stuff in the next one. Um, if you guys have anything specific you would like me to cover in that regard, I'd like to talk about some, like, self helpy sort of mental health things, um, because I know that therapy is not something that is available to everyone, and also, as someone who has had massive therapy trauma, it's not the answer for everyone, but there's still shit you can do to work on your brainy brain if it's not uh, doing the things you want it to. So, um, yeah. Please like and subscribe, comment, leave it in the dislikes below. I love you. Be safe. Make good choices.